You're watching the news on Bahrain Television. A very good day. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa paid a visit today to the Royal Guard headquarters in the presence of the Bahrain Defense Force Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was welcomed by the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and senior officers. سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة ملك البلاد المفدى سلام خذ قوة الواجب الخاصة اثنين جاهزة للتفتيش سيدي His Majesty the King then inspected the guards.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser delivered a speech in which he thanked His Majesty the King for his visit which reflects his keenness to personally follow up and inspect the status of all forces and units to check their readiness and meet their combat and administrative training needs He said that all members of the BDF are encouraged by the support of the wise leadership and affirm their dedication and commitment to their duty of serving their country The commander of the Royal Guard said the thanks to the Royal Directives Bahraini troops posted to the Yemeni regions of Ma'rib and Aden, as part of the Arab coalition to restore Yemen's legitimacy, continue to perform their duties courageously in support of the legitimate elected Yemeni government and the aspirations of the Yemeni people. He added that they also ensure the delivery of humanitarian aid to the people of Yemen and with the operation's decisive storm and restore hope. He noted that the Yemeni president has expressed thanks and appreciation to the Bahraini leadership and the Bahraini troops in the field and has decorated them with medals and appreciation of their heroic service. His Honor Sheikh Nasser praised the royal directives to mark Commemoration Day within the Kingdom's National Days, which demonstrated appreciation for the sacrifices of the Bahraini soldiers and their families. He pledged commitment on behalf of all BDF members to serve the country and also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his support and follow-up and also to the BDF Commander-in-Chief for his constant backing. ومحافظة عدن على أراضي اليمن الشقيق قدمت ولا زالت تقدم وبكل شجاعة وبسالة ووفاء وإقدام ما يدعم حكومته الشرعية المنتخبة وتطلعات الشعب اليمني الشقيق كذلك ضمان وصول المساعدات الإنسانية لهم في إطار عملية عاصفة الحزم وإعادة الأمل حيث قام الرئيس اليمني بتقديم الشكر والامتنان لقيادتكم الرشيدة ولقواتنا في الميدان ومنحهم الأوسمة التقديرية على مواقفهم البطولية سيدي قائدنا الأعلى لقد كان لتوجيهاتكم السديدة في إدخال ذكرى يوم الشهيد في السابع عشر من شهر ديسمبر من كل عام ضمن احتفالات المملكة بعيدها الوطني المجيد أبلغ الأثر في نفوس جنودك الأوفياء والمواطنين المخلصين مستذكرين بهذه المناسبة في كل عام شهدائنا الأبرار حين قدموا دماءهم الزكية دفاعا عن دينهم ووطنهم وها هم جنودك الأوفياء معاهدين الله ثم جلالتكم بأن يسيروا على درب من سبقوهم في سبيل رفعة الدين والذود عن الوطن وفي الختام سنبقى سيدي بالمستوى الذي تأملونه بأبنائكم وكما عاهدتمونا ولا يسعني في هذا المقام إلا أن أقدم خالص شكري وتقديري إلى سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه على دعمه ومساندته وصاحب المعالي القائد العام لقوة دفاع البحرين على الدعم المتواصل ولا محدود أدامكم الله سيدي للبحرين وللأمة العربية والإسلامية وحفظكم من كل مكروه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته after that, Captain Abdullah al Ajman recited a poem dedicated to His Majesty the King. والنعم بالاثنين عاشق وعشيق واللي يساوي كنوز مصر والعراق ولا يساوي ماسروما ولا غريق شوفت ملكنا مع زكيين العراق اخوان نجلة متعبين الملاحيق ما فاقت اعداهم ولا خاطر انضاق وحصيلهم بالسيف روس المطاليق 
شوفت ملكنا مع زكيين العراق اخوان نجلة متعبين الملاحيق ما فاقت اعداهم ولا خاطر انضاق وحصيلهم بالسيف روس المطاليق بطش الهنادي كنه البرق شعاق وتشهد على ما قلت انا هامت اطويق وسلام يا واحد له القاف يشتاق زيزوم شوباش الرجال المطاليق حمد لي يا رد البرا وثار تفاق والمدح في غيره مثل ما هو تلفيق زحل الملوك اللي للامجاد عشاق زحل الملوك اللي للامجاد عشاق لا جيت في هروجه فلا تونس الضيق قدر كبير وجاه والعز ما راق يا هنا ها عنده لينساق ما سيق له فزع سن يشبع به الذيب ما ضاق من هرت وتبقع وبانات وبقيق ودخيلهم يمسي وله نثني الساق حقه عليهم كالعهود المواثيق خويهم له منزل وسط الاعماق ويبشر بنا لين الضعن للضعن سيق والضيف له حق كما شمس الاشراق يقلط على الماجوب فوق الشواهيق في لازمه نفعل ونكرم وننساق له كلنا نشدي غروس مدانيق يا ستر مهيوف الحشاء ساس العراق ويا شوق عين الريم معسولة الريق ويا مرحبا ترحيبة ما بها انفاق ترحيبة تسطي بوسط المعاليق وسلام من جيش كما الرمح زراق بقولها يوم المراجل توافيق جند الحرس وافين لا ثار تفاق نوماس راسي ذا الرجال المطاليق ويا بلادنا أمنك بتفداها العناق سور الوطن محمي وخضر الزماليق ويا عزتي للي نوانا بمسباق يوم الملافق لفقوها الملافيق متوهمين نوري يا سم الأحداق يالله تكفينا من الشر ما ويق خبل يحسب النعم تشراب الأسواق لا ذايق نهمه ولا ذاق به طيب ولا ذاق به ضيق ولمدورين الحب وفراق عشاق هما جماع وما فلو فاق توفيق وقبل الختم بدعي ليلتم الأشفاق ودر المعاني مخلده في الصناديق يا الله يا خالق ويا مرسل الناق ارضاك عنا لا بعثت المخاليق عسانا لا تفت الساق بالساق انك تثبتنا على حق يليق يوم السوال ويوم نشفات الارياق عسى الكتاب في ايماننا كالمواثيق وفي جنتك تسقيننا كاس ديهاق وكواعب النتراب وثمار مدانيق امين يا وهاب ويا خير رزاق يلا عسانا من عذابك معاتيق وصلاة ربي ما بدا الصبح بشراق على النبي طه شفيع المخاليق السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أما الآن سيدي نستأذن جلالتكم بتوزيع الأوسمة على المشاركين بقوة الواجب الخاص رقم اثنين Rod Rickon, Muhammad Jum'ah Rumayhi, Qa'ad Quwwat al-Wajib, Raqam 2. His Majesty the King then presented medals to a number of officers in recognition of their commitment to performing their duties. His Majesty praised the participation of Royal Guard officers serving in Yemen alongside other BDF units within the Saudi-led Arab coalition to defend Yemen's sovereignty, to protect its people, and to perform their normal humanitarian duties in the country. His Majesty the King wished all BDF officers and members continued success, stressing that they are a source of pride to the people of Bahrain as they are a symbol of patriotism. راد ركن محمود سالم بو حمود ركن عمليات القياده المشتركه في عدن يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري نقيب محمد علي القتم ركن استخبارات قوات الواجب رقم اثنين يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري
نغيب محمد ماجد صياح النعيمي قائد مجموعة الأمن والحماية يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالإنابة عن عناصر الأمن والحماية نقيب محمد عبد الرحمن المريخي قائد سرية العمليات الخاصة يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري بالإنابة عن عناصر قيادة السرية نقيب أحمد سلطان السعود ركن إدارة قوة الواجب رقم اثنين يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالإنابة عن عناصر الإدارة نقيب عبد الله محمد السادة قائد مجموعة العمليات الخاصة الأولى يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالإنابة عن عناصر المجموعة ملازم أول حمد عيد الرويعي قائد فصيل القوات الخاصة الملكية يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالإنابة عن عناصر فصيل القوة الخاصة الملكية ملازم أول فيصل علي المنصوري قائد مجموعة العمليات الخاصة الثانية يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالإنابة عن عناصر المجموعة ملازم أول سعود عبد العزيز زياني قائد مجموعة الاتصالات يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ملازم أول فارس عيسى الدوسري قائد مجموعة القناصين يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري وكيل أول عيسى محمد يوسف الرويعي يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالإنابة عن عناصر الصيانة الفنية الملكية وكيل أول طارق عبد الصمد موسى يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالإنابة عن عناصر هندسة الميدان الملكية وكيل نايف محمد عبد الله ابو هلول يستلم وسام الواجب العسكري ويستلم بالانابه عن عناصر وحده الاتصالات الملكيه سيدي ولا يسعنا في هذا المجال الا ان نقدم لجلالتكم خالص الشكر والامتنان 
على اهتمامكم ورعايتكم الدائمة من لدن جلالتكم لأبنائكم وجندكم المخلصين لكم داير يعيش جلالة الملك المفجع يعيش جلالة الملك المفجع يعيش جلالة الملك المفجع يعيش يعيش His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Libya Palace today members of the Al Mahmoud family led by Dr. Sheikh Abdul Latif Al Mahmoud who thanked His Royal Highness for his condolences and sympathy on the demise of their relative Amna Abdul Aziz Al Mahmoud. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stressed the importance of preserving Bahraini society's values of communication upon all occasions and the necessity of reinforcing new generations so as to strengthen social fabric and coexistence. He noted Bahrain's national unity and cohesion, confirming pride that the people of Bahrain are cohesive under all circumstances. He affirmed that challenges will only strengthen determination to achieve the best interest for the homeland and preserve its security and stability. For their part, the audience expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's noble feelings, highlighting his keenness to be close to the people upon all occasions, wishing him continued health and happiness.
His Rohan is the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Libya Palace today. Members of the Abul family led by Mr. Mohammed Abul who expressed thanks and appreciation to His Rohan for attending the wedding of Firas Abul. His Rohan the Prime Minister highlighted the Bahraini people's values of communication, love and one family spirit which made Bahraini society throughout its history a model of cohesion amongst its different segments. He explained that taking part in all occasions and standing by the people in different circumstances is a duty that goes back to the values of the fathers and Forefathers. The audience, for their part, expressed pleasure in the attendance of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, which demonstrated his keenness to communicate with the people upon all occasions. They wished him good health and happiness to continue his development march. Lack of a quorum meant that the Representatives' Council weekly meeting could not go ahead today. The low attendance was due to differences in opinion over the increase in petrol prices. The Speaker of the Representatives' Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, held a meeting on this issue, but Council members were unable to reach agreement in the meeting and said they would like to use their constitutional tool in next week's meeting. The Minister of Energy, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, participated in the ninth opening session of the World Future Energy Summit held in Abu Dhabi on the sidelines of the Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week. The summit was launched yesterday under the patronage of the UAE Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, in the presence of the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The inauguration ceremony was attended by a number of world presidents as well as GCC and Arab Energy Ministers. The Minister of Energy said that the summit discussed ways of overcoming challenges facing the sustainable energy sector by developing the energy, oil, gas and renewable energy sectors. Leading figures in cultural development from around the world have gathered in Bahrain for the conference Investing in Culture, Business and Social Impacts. Danielle DePorto reports. President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, today opened the International Forum Investing in Culture, Business and Social Impacts, which was organized in association with Paris-based company Thinkers and Doers. The full-day event was held across three of Bahrain's cultural landmarks, the Bahrain National Theater, National Museum, and Arab Regional Center for World Heritage. It attracted important investors, cultural leaders, artists, and entrepreneurs from the Arab world and beyond, who participated in formal and informal discussions and workshops to advance public-private collaborations that develop industries related to national heritage and international cultural dialogue. Culture is an asset that hasn't been uh, investigated yet, uh, hasn't been given a potential uh, of what it can be, uh, how it can be developed. So uh, I'm very pleased that countries in the Gulf have 
realized this fact and uh, wanted to develop it to reach a level where it can be uh, a real investment. Bahrain is an example actually because you have a big infrastructure such as this theater, it's amazing and a very lively cultural life here. So uh, many events, many festivals, uh, very important artists. So I think it's, uh, it's quite an example in the region. The event tied in with the recent launch of Bahrain's Your Destination 2016 campaign to promote cultural tourism to the kingdom. The highlight of the day was the awarding of the Order of France honor, Officier de l'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres, to Sheikh Amé, for her contributions in the cultural field. And the whole idea behind the Invest in Culture initiative, which was launched by Sheikh Amé El Khalifa in 2006, was to create a partnership between the private sector and the public sector, specifically in culture. We've been participating, whether it's at the biennial, you know, at book fairs around the world or at the expo uh, this year, which was probably one of the biggest international events that we've participated in in the past years. And I think our participations have always kind of challenged the norm of what people are expecting from the region and in that sense have gained a lot of interest for Bahrain. Definitely there are many more events coming up uh, who bring in a different kind of culture to Bahrain and as well since we have a very exciting new venues here in Bahrain that the cultural events like concerts, uh, musicians coming here and these things so it's quite evolving and as well in Manama Souk there's a lot of things happening on a weekly basis let's say like this where the tourists have a good impression about Bahrain. One of the big philosophical questions raised was whether investing in cultural development should be a priority in the Arab world at this time, given the economic pressures of falling oil prices and the socio-political pressures of the region's various conflicts. The practical answer was that investing in culture is perhaps more important than ever, as it leads directly and indirectly to job creation, diversifying the economies, and enriches and inspires youths in an optimistic and constructive manner. Furthermore, in the wake of the destruction of important historical sites in the Arab world at the hands of terrorist organizations, investing in heritage regionally can positively contribute to today's international cultural dialogue as well as tomorrow's legacy. We tend to dwell on the, on the negative aspects of, of what's happening politically and, and economically rather than looking at the very positive and entrepreneurial spirit that, that youth have. I think there was another statistic that two out of five young Arabs want to set up their own business. So again, kind of this very entrepreneurial can-do spirit is out there throughout this region and that's something to be celebrated. And then one of the other statistics we were looking at is the uh, economic benefit that an event can bring to a country. And I gave the example of Art Dubai, which last March brought $35 million worth of new money into the UAE during just one week in March. And the, the reason to give this statistic is to really highlight how art and culture can be something that really contributes to a diversified economy. While the value of culture and heritage is often very intrinsic and intangible, this forum will examine ways to manifest it in a very meaningful way for economies and societies moving forward. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Daniel Deporta. That's all from Bahrain Television's News Centre. On behalf of the news team, have a good night and God bless.